Tonight, an iTeam exclusive, a mega house from mega church pastor. NBC Charlotte's iTeam has confirmed that Elevation Church pastor Stephen Furtick is building a 16,000 square foot home in Weddington. News of the multi-million dollar mansion prompted NBC Charlotte iTeam reporter Stuart Watson to do what investigative reporters do best, follow the money. Now, Elevation Church is the largest megachurch in North Carolina, and there's no question that Elevation and its pastor, Stephen Furtick, have done a lot of good. The church has just passed the $10 million mark in gifts to charities like Samaritan's Purse and Crisis Assistance Ministry. Full disclosure, members of our staff attend Elevation, and the church is paid to air its services on NBC Charlotte and its banner ads on WCNC.com. But when the I-Team learned that Furtick was building a $1.7 million home, we started asking hard questions. This is the story of the House of Stephen. Let's be a generation known for what we stand for. Let's be a generation known for what we love. In the beginning, Stephen Furtick created Elevation Church. He's a rock and roll star. His followers are called elevators. These elevators only went up. Good morning. Welcome to Elevation. From 14 people to 14,000 in less than eight years. Good morning, guys. Welcome. With even bigger plans for the future. And the Lord's going to enable us to be one of the first churches uh, in the United States to have 100,000 people. He's, he's one part preacher, and, one and part and celebrity. Stephen Burton! headlining all over the world. Don't you ever let anyone talk you out of what God put in you. He's not a club band anymore, he's a stadium band. His church giving more than $10 million to charity and hundreds of thousands of hours of volunteer work. Pastor Stephen Furtick, I want to tell you thank you. Now the man who just calls himself Pastor Stephen is more popular than the church he built with four times more followers on Twitter than Elevation Church itself. The book is called Greater, and uh, it's about dreaming bigger. Stephen Furtick is his oh, own brand, profiting from book sales and paid America, personal appearances around the world. And people are asking me, like, are you really going back to Australia again? So the pastor keeps making more money and more money and more money. Now Stephen Furtick is spending a lot of that money on a 16,000 square foot house. It has seven and a half bathrooms. Building permits put the contract value of the house alone just shy of $1.4 million. The land cost another $325,000 for a total cost of more than $1.7 million. You can't see the house from the street. It's behind a no trespassing sign off Lock Haven Road in Weddington. Hidden by 19 and a quarter acres of dense woods, Furtick's name is nowhere on the deed. Instead, the property is in the name of the Jumper Drive Trust. The pastor should be the servant of his people, and uh, he should be the the one that's the most transparent. Ole Anthony of the Trinity Foundation in Dallas, Texas, belongs to a small church. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe. He believes preachers should give up their big houses. It saddens me to see what the, the church is becoming. And get back to the Christian church's humble beginnings. There the, the pastors lived as the poorest of the poor, not the richest of the rich. For seven weeks, we've tried to talk to Stephen Furtick about his multi-million dollar home. We've sent emails, made phone calls, sent a registered letter, even made one face-to-face -face personal appeal. He's always declined until one Sunday, he brought me up in his sermon. So I've been feeling sorry for myself lately because they told me this news reporter is trying to do this story where he wants to make our church look bad. Then he described his multi-million dollar home as, quote, not that great. Well, me and Holly this year, we are uh, building a house. We've been looking for a piece of land to build a house for our family for a long time. So I'm like building this house and I'm real excited about it and everything. But then I found out this is crazy. The news tried to fly this chopper over our house. The people that are building it told us, they're flying the chopper over your house. I'm thinking to myself, first of all, 
it's not that great of a house. I mean, I'm sure there's better houses if you just got to fly a chopper over somebody's house. But it started to mess with me a little bit. And then I started to get a little self-pity because I was like, God, now this ain't right because I didn't even build that house with money from the church. I built it with money from my books. And I gave money to the church from the books. And you start getting real defensive and being like, this ain't right, this ain't right. I, I'm sorry, but there's something wrong with that. Chris Roseborough runs Pirate Christian Radio from his home in suburban Indianapolis. It's a kind of protest podcast against preacher profiteers. There's no distinction between Elevation Church and Stephen's books. The, the two get meshed together in a way that oftentimes creates a real conflict because the job of a pastor is not to preach his book. The primary place that, let's just say, advertises the message of the book is Elevation Church. Elevation Church paid for full-page ads promoting the book. Elevation Church paid to air sermons featuring the book on TV stations, including WCNC. You're going to give something away for every person that purchases greater. Elevation Church packed up swag to sell the book. Child gets a backpack for every copy of Greater. Somebody called this a gimmick the other day, and I thought it was just like always a good thing to do to give a poor child who can't afford a backpack a backpack full of supplies. I was like, didn't know that that fell under the category of gimmick. Elevation lead pastor Chunks Corbett tells me the books help the church tremendously in three ways. First, Furtick arranges for the publisher to sell books by the thousands to Elevation Church at his author's discount. So Elevation Church makes money on the book, but no one will say how much. Second, Furtick donates some of his own advance money to Elevation Church. Corbett says he's very generous, but no one will say how much. Third, the publisher pays Elevation Church outright to produce slick videos marketing the book, but no one will say how much. All this makes Elevation Church sound like just one more private business. I mean, is he not doing the exact same thing that the money changers were doing in the temple, basically using God's house to make a profit? I mean, this is exactly the same behavior. You know what Jesus did? He made a cord of whips and drove those damn people out of, his, out of God's house. The, the church does not exist for this. While the nonprofit tax-exempt church paid for the promotion, the profits from the book paid Furtick himself. Profits that he says bought the multi-million dollar home. I would also argue that it's not exactly suffering for Jesus. Warren Cole Smith is a Charlotte author and editor at The World a Christian magazine. That's sort of the dirty little secret of megachurch pastors is that they, they, they use this church as a platform and then they sell books and then they make a lot of money on the side. Yet Elevation Church has asked volunteers and employees alike to sign this confidentiality agreement. The agreement threatens to sue volunteers and members if they disclose church finances. If Stephen Furtick's followers and the congregation at Elevation want to pay him these outlandish salaries, want to allow him to live in multi-million dollar homes, that's up to them. They're the ones that are contributing the money, but they should know that. And many churches believe that the congregation, the people, the followers should get a say in the pastor's salary and his housing allowance though, through these elected elders or deacons in the church. But at Elevation Church, this is a closely guarded secret. And tomorrow night, the I-Team will report on the men who set Stephen Furtick's salary. They are not elected, and none of them are even members of Elevation Church. Now at 6, our I-Team broke the story of the mega church pastor's 16,000 square foot mansion. Tonight, the question is, who sets his salary? And who holds him accountable? The I-Team Stuart Watson found Elevation isn't run like most churches, raising questions of accountability. So maybe you've been feeling sorry for your scars a little bit lately. Pastor Stephen Furtick has made generous giving a cornerstone at Elevation Church. It's crazy. We just passed the mark of $10 million given in the lifetime of this church to organizations outside of the church. But Pastor Stephen will not tell you how much he gets paid. So when I started asking about it, he preached about me. There's an investigative reporter. He's been calling around, and people have been calling us. Furtick and his top media. lieutenants refuse to tell the people who pay his salary, the congregation at Elevation Church, just how much he makes. We don't know. 
And the reason we don't know is because they won't say. Warren Cole Smith writes books about the evangelical church from his home in Charlotte. The real problem is that there is a lack of transparency. Stephen Furtick recruited a so-called board of overseers to set his salary. Well, that board of overseers looked to me to be a paper tiger. The board of overseers is made up entirely of other megachurch pastors just like Stephen Furtick. The, the financial well-being of all of these guys are intimately intertwined. That means Stephen Furtick agrees to pay them to preach at Elevation, and they pay him to preach at their conferences or megachurches. They attend each other's conferences and are compensated for that regularly. Elevation executive pastor Chunks Corbett told me, yes, pastors get paid for church appearances, but he said the pay is, quote, small in scope. And no, he will not disclose the amounts. So when Stephen Furtick held his Code Orange revival last year, three of the headliners, Pastor Stovall Weems of Jacksonville, Perry Noble of Anderson, South Carolina, and Kevin Gerald of Seattle, were all board members at Elevation. That's three of five votes that set Furtick's salary. It, yeah, they scratch each other's backs. That's not accountability. That's Chris Roseborough runs Pirate Christian Radio from his home near Indianapolis. All of the accountability in Furtick's church goes from the top down. Elevation Church was founded by Southern Baptists, got loans through Southern Baptists, still gives missionary money through Southern Baptists. But unlike many Baptist churches, there are no elected deacons or elders here overseeing the church. None of these guys are actually living in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. There is one leader living in the Charlotte area, Chunks Corbett. And if you want to understand Elevation Church, you need to understand his role. Chunks Corbett is the center of Furtick's organization. In 2005, he incorporated Elevation Church. In 2007, Corbin Properties Southeast, a for-profit company. In 2008, he signed on as trustee for the Jumper Drive Trust that held the Furtick's home. And in 2009, he incorporated Sunstand Still Ministries, another nonprofit. All four list the same principal address, 11416 East Independence Suite Inn, the location of the Matthews Elevation Church. Chunks Corbett refuses to speak on camera, but he spent 90 minutes with me answering some questions. He praises Stephen Furtick for his generosity to Elevation Church, but he refuses to release the church's audited financial statement or its bylaws, which govern the church. That's in stark contrast to another local megachurch, Forest Hill Church. Forest Hill spells out how its elders are elected right on its website. We then screen them, we interview them, look at uh, their experience here in the church and uh, their commitment to Christ. And Forest Hill releases its audited financial statement. We want to be beyond reproach. We want people to see exactly uh, what this congregation is giving. Many other evangelical groups, like the Billy Graham Evangelical Association and Samaritan's Purse, release their tax returns by law. So if you give, you might not completely approve of what Franklin Graham gets paid, but at least you know and you get a say. The Baptist State Convention of North Carolina puts a salary chart for preachers right on its website. You can look up what Baptist preachers get paid depending on the size of their congregations. The highest pay for churches over 1,000 members is $231,000 a year. But megachurches like Elevation are in a category all their own. They hire compensation consultants to look at other megachurches and no one is releasing those numbers. Stuart Watson, NBC Charlotte. And thank you for staying with us. I'm Dave Wagner. And I'm Dion Lim. You don't build a house without a blueprint. Stephen Furtick built Elevation Church into North Carolina's largest megachurch and a major player in community giving. But who helped him with that blueprint? The I-Team Stuart Watson keeps following the money. Would you join me in welcoming to the Elevation Church stage, Pastor Young. Stephen Furtick looks to Texas megachurch pastor Ed Young as a mentor, and Young admires Furtick. The man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. The tower of preaching power, Stephen Furtick. Ed Young promotes big conferences around the world for pastors who want to build their own megachurches. It's an ancient L, we're fighting hell. Somebody ring the bell, let me hear you yell. When Young and his wife Lisa climbed in bed on the roof of their fellowship church, to encourage couples to have sex every night. I just basically 
suggested to the church for all married couples to have sex for seven days. Stephen Furtick was one of the many pastors to Skype in. Well, rather than a, a book about the evils of sex, to say this is the way God intended it to be. Yeah. Good morning, welcome to Elevation. Furtick credits Ed Young and his C3 conference with showing him a blueprint for growing Elevation. No conference has had a greater impact on my life and the life of our church than C3. It was at C3 before we started our church that I sat in the back of the room and saw for the first time what the local church is capable of. It was through Ed and Lisa Young's leadership that I saw the creative potential of the church. And Ed Young invited Furtick himself to speak at C3. Stephen Furtick! The conferences are one part organization, one part motivation. Do you really think that you're special and unique and gifted to do what God's called you to do? I guess a good way to compare it to would be like a big hoorah Amway meeting. Chris Roseboro runs Pirate Christian Radio from his home in Indianapolis. Ed Young was one of the guys who very early on, he was an early adopter of these, this new way of doing church. And Furtick patterned himself on Young in more ways than one. Young bought a 10,000 square foot home. Furtick bought a 16,000 square foot home. Young's home is worth $1.5 million. Furtick's home costs $1.7 million. Young put his home in the name of the Palomita Revocable Trust. Furtick put his home in the name of the Jumper Drive Revocable Trust. It sounds like Furtick is copying almost to the letter what Ed Young is, has done here in Dallas. Ole Anthony is a church watchdog at the Trinity Foundation in Dallas, Texas. It's a job to them. It's a business. It's a way they make money. And here's the most important Why? connection between Ed if Young and Stephen her, Furtick. You know, Ed Young I served on Stephen to, Furtick's uh, board of overseers. Of that sets Furtick's salary. And our sister station in Dallas, Texas reports Ed Young gets a housing allowance worth $250,000 a year, a quarter million dollars tax-free just for housing. So, how much does Elevation Church pay Stephen Furtick for his housing allowance? No one will say. Executive Pastor Chunks Corbett told me 24 pastors at Elevation are paid a tax-free housing allowance as part of their compensation. He confirms that Furtick took out a construction loan to build his new house. But as to how much Elevation pays Furtick for his housing allowance, no one will say. Stuart Watson, NBC Charlotte. I don't call this an attack. I, I don't. Pastor Stephen Furtick told the congregation at Elevation Church he was sorry if questions about his $1.7 million home had caused them to have difficult conversations. And having to have those conversations, um, that really bothered me. And it made me sad, and I am sorry that you had to have those conversations this week. I have always endeavored with everything within me to make this a church that you could always be very proud of. Furtick first referred to the house as not that great, but in this message, he changed his tone. Holly and I made a decision to build a house. It's a big house. Furtick told his followers they could always have copies of audited financial statements of the church, but he has yet to make those public. I have always promised that this ministry would be a ministry of integrity. And while he once said reporters were trying to make the church look bad, he now says the media has every right to ask questions. This is a news story, and the media is not our enemy. They have the right to run any story they choose to run, and people have the right to have any opinion that they choose to have. And he concluded the response with a promise. He's not going away. For the next 50 years, I plan on being right here. Furtick's statement lasted about eight minutes. We'll put the whole thing on our website. What he did not do and will not do is answer questions, and there are many of them, about his salary, his housing allowance, how much he makes from books and outside speaking fees, all of those promoted by the tax-exempt Elevation Church, and how Elevation Church is governed, not by an elected board of elders, but by a group of fellow megachurch pastors. Stuart Watson, NBC Charlotte. 
The document is marked confidential. It's important because the church has kept these kinds of numbers secret, even from donors who give Elevation money and taxpayers who give it numerous tax breaks. In fact, Elevation asked staff to sign a confidentiality agreement, acknowledging the church could sue them if they disclosed church finances. We're not going to show you all the numbers to minimize any harm to Elevation Church. So, for instance, we won't report on pending real estate deals. But we want to share enough numbers that you'll see just how big and how powerful Elevation is becoming. I'm Chris, and I'm number 222. I'm number 8,683. Number 7,038. Elevation Church is all about the numbers. It says so right in its founding principles called the Code. Get to Jesus and be baptized today. So Elevation counts salvations, 3785 this year, baptisms, 3519, and it religiously counts the number of people at each of its eight locations, now regularly totaling more than 14,000 a week. And this confidential report obtained by the NBC Charlotte I team shows that the church counts money, lots of money. It's collecting more than half a million dollars a week, and Furtick says he discloses all that. Through the external audit that we voluntarily go through, as well as through the audited income statement and balance sheets that we make available to everyone who's a part of Elevation Church. That's not even close to full disclosure. Rusty Leonard founded Ministry Watch, a nonprofit watchdog for donors. First of all, it's not the full audited financial statements. It's just some pretty pictures that you said that are a portion of the audited financial statements. This is what a full audited financial statement looks like. And it contains not just numbers, but notes from the auditors in the back. This shows, for instance, if the pastor's wife gets money from a nonprofit that's run by the church. Now, this doesn't mean that they've done anything wrong. It just means there's full disclosure. And Forest Hill Church, another mega church in town, puts this audited financial statement right on their website. Elevation. Elevation Church won't show you an audited financial statement with those notes, even if you're a member. Instead, it releases a glossy, full-color annual report. That'll tell you the numbers of breath mints a campus pastor eats, how many minutes of ACDC songs played, and whether the pastor wears a V-neck shirt, but not how much money he made. I promise that this would always be a ministry of integrity. Unfortunately, that's just not backed up by the facts. If he was to be truly full of integrity, uh, he would reveal all this information. Rusty Leonard is willing to publicly question Stephen Furtick's integrity you shall overcome. while at the same time admiring him and wishing him well. It's sad. It's a great church. The Pastor Furtick's a great preacher. He's br brought blessings to many. And unfortunately, it's uh, a situation where he allowed this one situation to get out of control right from the get-go of the, of the organization, the church. No one asked Furtick many hard questions about money until he bought a $1.7 million home on 19 and a quarter acres near Weddington. Uh, if Pastor Furtick had bought a house that was four or $500,000, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. You know, and that's a big house. That's a lot of house, and, but there wouldn't be a big uproar about it. Unfortunately, he went way over the top. Elevation Church keeps Furtick's salary, tax-free housing allowance, contracts, book deals, speaking fees, and any other for-profit work all a secret. A church doesn't have to tell you anything about anything. Uh, they are not required by law to tell you one bean of information. And Rusty Leonard says that secrecy doesn't just hurt Elevation, it hurts other churches too. Non-Christians could say, well, why are we giving these guys these breaks, these tax breaks? And in the end, it could be detrimental to the whole church community. This confidential planning document shows just how big the tax-free church is getting. Without disclosing individual real estate deals, we can report Elevation plans to spend $86 million on five new locations, including three the church has not yet reported, Rock Hill, University, and Matthews. That's $86 million to build a bigger platform for Stephen Furtick. It includes more than $9 million just for audio, video, and lights. 
Elevation Chief Financial Officer Chunks Corbett emailed us a statement saying, while the numbers are accurate, they represent far more than our church is undertaking. Other projects identified in the report you've come into possession of represent potential opportunities we are looking at in the future. Furthermore, to total these projects, assuming they're all going to happen, would be categorically false, as many are options for the same project and some may never materialize. And when Elevation buys property, like the old Palace Theater near Lake Norman, that property no longer generates taxes to the county. So it's a fair question, not just for donors to Elevation, but also for the rest of us as taxpayers. What are we getting in exchange for these tax breaks? And what is Pastor Stephen getting? He doesn't have to tell you, and he's not going to. Stuart Watson, NBC Charlotte. When we first reported how Elevation Pastor Stephen Furtick was building a 16,000 square foot home, we got a lot of complaints from his supporters. Ashley Todd pretty much summed it up, writing, so what if he builds a huge house? How is that any concern of yours or anyone else's? Well, the answer is, if you're a taxpayer, it is your concern, because pastors don't pay income taxes on the salary they get for housing. It's called a parsonage allowance, and when preachers are exempt from paying a big chunk of income taxes, guess who does pay? This ain't right! This ain't right! Pastor Stephen Furtick will not reveal how much Elevation Church pays him as a tax-free parsonage allowance. It's not that great of a house. But his mentor, Pastor Ed Young Jr. in Dallas, gets about a quarter million dollars a year tax-free just for housing. Elevation Church pays 24 ordained pastors parsonage allowances, yet no one will say how much. It's a big house. It's a beautiful house. But my question about the parsonage allowance doesn't start or end with Pastor Stephen and his big house. I believe or feel that God called me to be here. 17 years ago, as a young reporter at WRAL in Raleigh, I wanted to know why the CEO of Goodwill Industries of Eastern North Carolina, a man named Dennis McLean, got $54,000 a year just for expenses. As a Methodist minister assigned to Goodwill Industries, I get a parsonage allowance. Oh. $54,000 a year. Whatever it is, but that's a parsonage allowance. Is that's that, correct. Is that fair? The, the fair has nothing to do with it. McLean declined to speak to me again. Fair or not, just because he's ordained, McLean gets a tax break for a parsonage. Even though he doesn't pastor a church, he works at Goodwill. Now the Raleigh News and Observer reports McLean and his wife, also at Goodwill, earn nearly $800,000 a year. And thanks in large part to the parsonage allowance, more than $147,000 of that is tax-free. We think that's unfair. Dan Barker is a co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, a national group of atheists and agnostics. I was an ordained minister. After 19 years of believing, really believing and preaching the gospel, I changed my mind. When Dan was a preacher, he got a tax break for housing. You don't even have to report it. It was nice. I mean, who wouldn't want that advantage, you know? I mean, if you're paying your taxes, you want every break you can get. But as atheists, Barker and his wife and co-president, Andy Laurie Gaylor, sued the IRS over the parsonage exemption. And the rest of us pay more because clergy pay less. They need to pay their fair share. The atheists sued in federal court in Madison, Wisconsin, where their headquarters is. And we are seeking an end to the parsonage exemption which we think is unconstitutional. They claim the parsonage allowance violates the so-called Establishment Clause in the First Amendment to the Constitution because Congress gave a tax break to clergy but not to all nonprofits. And sometimes we're seeing stupendous housing allowances, overpaid ministers. The bigger the house, the bigger the tax break because the parsonage allowance is limited only by the fair market rental value of the pastor's home. So if you choose to live in the Sistine Chapel or a mansion, you can't claim more than the fair rental value, but that could be astronomical. Building this house and I'm real excited about it and everything. Dan and Annie Laurie couldn't care less what Elevation Church pays Stephen Furtick. They do care about the tax break. And if they want to pay the pastor $50 million a year, we're not complaining about that, that's freedom. But if they are excluding housing from taxation, tax, tax liability, then that's hurting all of us. And thanks to the secrecy Congress affords churches, taxpayers have no idea how much the parsonage allowance is even worth. 
It's shielded from public scrutiny, and yet the public are subsidizing churches. You see, most nonprofits have to make their tax forms public. You can go online right now and you can see my salary. You can see our organization's income and expenses down to the penny. We have to be accountable. We know what Goodwill pays Dennis and Linda McLean because the nonprofit makes its tax forms public. If you are a tax exempt organization, then your business is everybody's business. But think about it. When it comes to being accountable, the atheists are now more forthcoming than some Christians. We hear that churches, everything they do is good, and they're being given this tax exemption to do good, and yet why keep it secret? What do they have to hide? Only last week, a federal judge in Wisconsin handed the atheists a first round victory. The judge ruled the tax break for the parsonage allowance is unconstitutional and should be thrown out. The decision will almost certainly be appealed. Stuart Watson, NBC Charlotte.